Hello everyone, my name is John Yates and I'm with the Gannett Client Computing Practice. In this short video we're going to talk about what needs to be done on a remote server so it can become an SCCM distribution point. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to connect to the server that's going to become the distribution point in the SCCM 2012 environment. I'm going to connect from a server that has the ability to reach that remote server. In this case, this example will use server 2012 R2 from both the jump station as well as the remote server. I'm going to go ahead and click on start. I'm going to click on run and I'm going to go ahead and type in MSTSC and hit enter. This will pull up the remote desktop connection and in this case you can see that the server we'll be working with today is already populated in the computer field. I'm going to go ahead and connect to this box. Once connected to this box there are three things that I must do. The first thing I need to look at is the Windows firewall settings. Again, if you're working with Server 2012 R2, you can right click on the start button and you can get to the control panel. Your control panel might look slightly different. You can either navigate via the icons, the category view, or the small icons view. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on Windows firewall and this will also look very similar uh, in Server 2008. And in this case, you can see that the firewall is turned off. Uh, in order to use SCCM 2012 uh, as a distribution point on a server, you must have either the firewall shut off like you see here or the appropriate ports must be open. And there is documentation available on which ports should be open. Next, we must look at the permissions of the server. In order to do that, again, I'm going to go back to the start menu. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to computer management. This is the same computer management you'll get in server 2008. If I click on local users and groups, and I go to groups, let's go ahead and click on administrators, go to properties, and what we need to do is we need to add the SCCM server. I'm going to go ahead and click add. You notice that it's looking for users, service accounts, or groups. And in this case, we actually needed to look for a computer object. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply click that object types, click on computers, and hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in ENT MOC SMS CCM 11, which is the primary site server. I'm going to go ahead and do a check names on that. And you can see that it resolved that name. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Apply. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK here again. The last thing we need to look at is we need to make sure. Uh, we know what volumes we want SCCM to be installed on and how many exist on the server. By looking at the computer we can see that this server has a C drive and an NE drive. Um, by default SCCM will go to the largest volume with the most available free space, in this case it would be the E drive. Uh, we don't want SCCM to put any data on the C drive and in your case you might have other volumes you don't want SCCM to write data to either. We can't create a file on server 2012 R2 right at the root of C. We actually have to create it outside of that and then drag it in. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the desktop and I'm going to go to new and I'm going to create a text document. I'm going to open this text document. I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to name this no underscore SMS underscore on underscore drive dot sms. I'm going to change that type to all files so it takes the dot sms extension. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now I have a no sms on drive file. I'm going to go ahead and open my C drive. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over. It's going to challenge me on the permissions. I'm going to hit continue. And now that you'll see we have a no sms on drive dot sms. You'll need to repeat this action for each volume you do not want SCCM to be installed on. Once you've completed that, those are the only steps that we need to take on the remote distribution point. Many of you might remember the need to set up IIS and do a lot of configurations. In SCCM 2012, that's no longer required. Uh, when we actually build out the distribution point, those options are already provided to us, and SCCM will configure IIS for us. Thank you for watching this video.